Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another replay analysis with me, Vibe. Yeah, this guy. And today we got Muffin again. This is for the fifteenth time. Muffin Maestro, come on down, dude. In a Z B T of a diamond level. Diamond level. We can see he did not choose to split his drones, but that's totally fine. You don't need to yet. But it's always a great idea. Now let's watch how he fucks his mineral line up. Okay, these are two drones here, two drones here, one drone there, one drone here. We do have two drones on this patch and two drones on this patch. What I really want to see happening though is I want to see these drones in the close patches get saturated with two and drones in the far patches get ripped off and go to the close ones instead. Notice how these two patches right here are going to be mined with two drones each the whole time. I hate it. Look at this. These two close patches with lonely drones. Uh, you should, everyone, anyone out there, work on that, always. There's no, like, what do we, let's go back and watch his, uh, his actions really quick. What's going on? Okay, this is good. We got a drone made, we got overlord spread, now what are we doing? Type a good like a fun. Fuck your opponent, you gotta type that? Who gives a shit? Type it later when you saturate your mineral line properly. Now what are we doing? We're looking at our natural. We're looking at the main. We're vibu derping right now. If I, if only I could have really good control of my eyes and I could make one guy, one eye go that way and the other eye go that way, I would just be like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> we're honestly doing nothing. And it happens in every game. There's not really anything you can be doing right now. But you can though, right? You think you can't, but you can. You can saturate your close mineral lines. Close patches. That's what you can do. Do it. All right, moving on. Look, he's getting fancy and shit. Instead of saturating those close patches, look what he does instead. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna spray this ground and then I'm gonna build a hatchery there. That way, just in case we go into a full base trade and now somehow I end up down here and the Terran ends up over here, he's gonna see this tattoo I left for him. Because that never gets deleted. <laughs> More important things need to be done. Like this. Once you get your close patches, having two per, which they all do now, we got one far patch with three over here and one with one. What the fuck? No, that's, that's also important. Okay. Every patch should have two, and it, you should start immediately with your first 12 drones, because just know, guys, if there are four close patches... I'm going to blow your minds right now really fast, okay? If there are four close patches and four far patches, okay, and you start with 12 workers, every single close patch could have two drones on it immediately. Did you know that? Because that the way what that would mean is is if you have four close four far four close and four far patches, and every patch is supposed to have two, that means that close ones could have eight, which is two per, and the far ones could have one each, which is four. Eight plus four is still twelve, and that's what you start with. That's your starting worker count. So there's no reason why you couldn't have all close patch, all close patches saturated properly within the first ten seconds of the game. Because it might take you a couple seconds to like get it, get your like, overlord going and your drone going and like l let your drone split out and then try to fix it. Up to like 10 seconds though. Once you're at like 10 seconds, if you don't have it done already, you definitely need to work on that. Especially if you're in Diamond League. If you're a lower league, I'll be a little accepting. If you're bronze, it might take you five minutes. If you're silver, it might take you four minutes. If you're gold, it might take you uh, two minutes. And if you're platinum, it might take you 45 seconds. But if you're diamond, 10 seconds. Ten seconds. And then anything above that anything beyond that is you're falling behind. Or you just don't know how important it is.
to be honest, if you're anything below diamond, you can probably just never do it and not care. But it is something that is a good habit to develop for yourself. In general. It's not bad. And it only, again, also guys, the other thing too is, this only applies to your first base. I'm not telling you to do it for every base. Like every time you expand, you got to make two, 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 two. Expand again, two, 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 two. Who, who cares? You got more important things going on at that point in the game. It's only important and relevant for your first base. Because your first base, there is nothing going on. There's nothing else going on. And it does give you slight leads if it's if the AI improperly saturates. Which it does do often. I would say the, the chance of the AI giving you perfect saturation of two drones per patch is probably like a 30% chance. It can do it, but it's a low chance. And also, the chance of the AI not only saturating every close patch immediately right away, and then on top of that, once you make more drones, also giving you perfect saturation and not having any hiccups where it's like three on one on any patch. So it, it, it just does it perfectly the whole time. Chances of that happening are probably 2%. It could happen, but it's very rare. Most likely it won't happen. Most likely... The AI will saturate far patches with double, at least on one patch or more, by the way, just like this game did. And it will also have, at one point in time, a three on one patch. Just do your best to put two on close patches. At the very least, if you can just do that in the first, like, like literally go like this. Make a drone, move your overlord, close patch, close patch, close patch, close patch. That's it. If you can just do that, you're already so much ahead of the curve in terms of proper saturation of your mineral line because that is already so much more impactful than having three on one patch and, and so on and so on because close patches mine faster than far patches and it ramps up how fast you can make everything as well. Like it makes a big difference um, in the long run. Uh, but if your opponent is not super great, it, you won't really notice how big of a difference it makes. But yeah, it, it's things like this are important. It's 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 a good thing to practice for yourself because you're not really being distracted by like a reaper or a proxy or anything like that because it's, it's literally the first ten seconds of the game. Nothing is happening yet. Highly recommend everyone out there, no matter what league you're in. It could be GM, it could be bronze. It's something you can work on, but just don't allow yourself to lose. Like, make sure you know that larva is a priority still. Always, larva is still always the priority. But it's something you should do in all your games. Close patch saturation and then try to maintain two per patch in your main only. And then don't worry about it from that point on. Who gives a shit? Because at that point in time, the game is kind of developed into something else. Like, you could get, you could be getting attacked, you could be getting all in. You need to worry about stuff. The game has uh, progressed. Alright, let's look at his build again. I kind of skipped his build. I just really talked about the saturation, which is a big deal. Alright, so we had a hatchery go down on like 17. Now we have like an 18. This is like a 19 gas and an 18 pool. This is really greedy. It's a, it's a little late. If there was like a proxy Rax, this would be really scary for you to deal with. I would say against Terran, at the, mo the most greedy you should be is 17, 18, 17. This was, it looked like 17, 19, 18. Just uh, every second counts if you get all in, though. So just keep that in mind. And you're really not going to get any uh, economy benefits going 17, 19, 18, or 17, 18, 17. Hi, Vibe. I heard you were doing a YouTube video. Can you let me know when you start? I don't want to talk about dicks during the video. You know how we talk about dicks on Skype after the stream? Like that. Anyway, just let me know. Thanks, Seek Buddy. Dude, the video's already started. We'll talk about dicks later. Thank you very much for the hundred. <laughs> Alright, we're back to the game, guys. Yo, great gecko, thank you, man. Much appreciated. It's gonna be on YouTube forever. <laughs> thank you, dude. Alright, so what is he doing? Uh, we have a hundred gas now. Uh, he's still making drones and stuff. I like it. He has enough lings to deal with the Reaper. I like it. We'll see where he goes from here. That always is annoying when that happens. Okay. 
We talked about this before in the other one. This build is uh, unrealistic. Give me my fucking unit tab. Where's the U key? There it is. Here's what's about to happen, guys. Let's look at production really quick. This is even worse. Here's what's about to happen. This this game is already a shit show. Gecko? Or not Gecko. Gecko, thank you, man. But Muffin? I love you, dude. But you fucked up big time here. And this is why. First of all, your third's way too fast. And your your even if you had an overlord made properly, your third's too fast and it would fuck your larva up pretty bad. And it also slows down your queen production. You have no creep spread. There's no way you can afford to make gas constantly and take a third base and keep your queen production going and also uh, keep the gas running to tech. If I didn't already say that. You can't do all of this at once. You have to pick and choose what you what you can do to start a build off. And the, the path you've chosen, even if you made an overlord, would still have larva sitting there constantly because this is just too expensive. You really needed to have, honestly, if you're going to go for a third base, pull your drones off gas. T like, teching this fast only makes sense if you're going to two base it at the start and then take a third once your natural is already fully saturated. Like, it, once you have 16 drones on your natural, then you take a third if you're going to rush a layer. That's the only way that makes sense. Because then you could actually afford it. Uh, and again, yeah, if you take a third really fast, instead of getting gas really fast, it would make more sense to make more queens. So that not only could your creep spread be connected to your bases faster, so you could defend pressure with your queens, but it also gives you the ability, uh, if you take your drones off gas, to have more queens. Like, in a different, like, I said first it was about your creep being spread, but the secondly, it's about your defending an actual attack. Queens are amazing at defending attacks. And, um, mining gas still like this and going for a layer, it means that not only can you not build one at all, because your hatchery's tied up and building a fucking layer now, but you just seriously cannot afford it. So, yeah. Uh, queen production is huge if you're going to go for a third base to help defend that. So build super inefficient right now. Because look at the larva. Okay, we canceled the layer. Uh, we're still mining gas full on though, so we're going we're gonna to see a shitload of gas. There is no roach warren, there's no bane nest. The, the layer's probably going to get restarted again soon. Um, but, yeah, like the... Your build is just and it's super inefficient. You have to you have to pick one. Layer, two base, or three base with queens. And even if you go layer two base, I would still highly recommend making a, another queen out of your natural faster. Now the layer's restarted again. That's what I'm saying. Like there's no it, it, there's no point to really cancel it at this at this point because it's just gonna start again. There's there's nothing else going on. The mistake is the mistake is not canceling the layer and then restarting the layer. It was honestly mining the gas after you got zergling speed if you're going to go for a third base. That was the mistake. Because if this guy attacks here's why. And if you guys are wondering, vibe, why why is this a mistake? You're not really explaining why. You're just saying it is a mistake. This is why. Biggest thing of all, okay? If you try to do everything at once. If you're the kind of zerg player that's like, "All right, I'm going to keep mining gas." I'm going to get a layer. I'm also going to try and spin all my larva. And I'm also going to take a third base. Just know that 100% you can take a third base. Because that you're forcing the third to happen. That's just a one-time thing. The third base is a one-time thing. It's your third base. So it's a one-time cost investment. Your layer is a one-time cost investment. You're attacking the layer one time. In this case, two times, I guess, because you canceled it and restarted it. But it's a one-time cost, realistically. You don't make 15 layers... You make one layer. And when you do these things, in your mind you're thinking, all right, my third's well-timed, my layer's well-timed, every the, the gears are turning, I'm, everything's running well. But when you do these things too fast, your larva, like we just talked about, sits there forever. And now we have these a bunch of larvae sitting there for too long. And it's about, to, it's like, we can never get it spent. Because right now we have two. We still have not fully spent the larva. This is really bad. It's been, there has been larva sitting on this hatchery for like almost a full minute. And now it's going up again. Because another inject just popped off. Like it sucks having larva like this. It's super inefficient. Every one of these larva needed to have been drones immediately, immediately, immediately. It, uh, it really slows your build down. And if you get attacked at your third base, okay? If you were, if with this build, the way it's going. If, you, if, if this guy was to do like, um... Uh, bio timing or a cyclone hillion or some type of an attack how could you defend your third 
Like you just wouldn't. If this guy decided to be aggressive, your third guaranteed would be dead. So it's like, and it would be it would be done for sure by the time he attacks it, but you would have no way to defend it. You have no speed, or though you would have speed, sorry, but you have no lings really being made. You're already planning on going into a roach build here. If you make lings now, it seems even more inefficient because there's you could have made lings off of hatchery tech and no gas, and you're like it. It just doesn't flow. The build doesn't make any sense. I honestly think there's no reason to have speed if you're gonna go for a roach wall off like this really fast. There, there is a reason to have like so you're, you're doing like two builds at the same time, but they don't synergize at all together. Getting speed, great. Getting a third base goes really well with getting speedlings because it gives you the access to try and defend your third if it gets attacked. Having a like you know having a couple queens, great. Should definitely have more if we're gonna go for a third because it backs the queen the lings up really hard not only by giving them creep but by also giving the lings like a backbone in case you get attacked by banshees or something that can just straight up kick the shit out of lings. But uh, we don't have that. And instead, we have a tech rushing build, which is great. You have queens injecting your bases. You're trying to make your, your most of your the use of most of your larva by making drones. It's great. You're just you're spinning all your drones. You're spinning all your larva. It's wonderful. Very sweet. Thank you very much for the 16 viewer host. Welcome, everybody. Guys, we're currently doing a YouTube video. So I, pr I probably will ignore you a little bit in the chat. Don't hate me. Much love. Welcome everybody, uh, but this is this is like a kind of like a mini coaching lesson for. Uh, uh, it's called replay analysis. It's like mini. It's like coaching for Starcraft basically, but yo, Cami, thank you very much. Welcome to the to the stream. Hell yeah. Anyways, what I was saying was I'll, I'll start it over so no one's confused about the last point I was making. Uh, the second way to look at this build is it's a tech build with roaches. It's great, but it the the power of this build is you wall off your base. Because you're not worried about anything outside of the wall. And then you're able to actually spend all your larva on drones. Really, 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 really greedy. But all that's really happening if you do a build like this. Is by putting the investment into Zergling Speed. And putting the investment into the third base does nothing but. Hiccup your larva. So that you can't spend your larva efficiently. Because this is 400 minerals. Invested now. Into. Uh, it's 400 minerals invested into making shit you don't need. Which is the equivalent of what eight drones would be. Plus, it's also 100 gas invested into speed, which is going to do nothing but delay your tech, which delays your roach timing. So these these two builds do not synergize at all. They're really bad together. Um, you need to pick one or the other. Third base with more more mineral based build, less gas, get speed and stop mining gas for a little bit. Or you rush your gas like you did, go faster layer, go for a roach one, and you don't take a third this fast, and you don't get zergling speed. Because, again, we, this is the same problem I've had almost every game with Muffin. I'm going to hit back one time. And I just want you guys to look at the worker count. His worker count is always way too close to the Terran. Like, this, you got to keep in mind, this Terran is making orbital commands, and he's not even making SCVs for a while. Because he's literally upgrading a command center to an orbital, yet somehow we're still, like, tied on workers. And it's because your build is just super inefficient. For the reasons we just discussed. If you're tied on workers with a Terran, you're losing the game. Like, he's already got multiple gases. Like, look at, look, just look at the economy. I just want to point this out. Zerg has six more workers than Terran right now. Yet, the Terran is mining almost double the gas. And he's also still beating the mineral count, too. And the reason why this is happening is because the Zerg's, mineral, the Zerg's drone count right now should actually be around 50, not 41. So that it would be more advantageous for Zerg here if the build was if either one of the builds were picked properly. Uh, also, if you're ever really tied or really close to worker count uh, against a Terran, just know that each one of these mules he has that's active counts for about six workers while it's alive. A mule has about a one minute duration, and it is literally worth about six workers. So realistically, right now the Terran's income is actually uh, like forty seven. Because he has two two mules active, so it's like he has forty seven SCVs right now. Where if I, the Zerg, like I said a second ago, had like fifty drones, prop, like properly saturated with fifty, even though he has mules, he would still be winning. 
Because you would need, like, seriously, like, 50 right now for this build to be efficient. And it would, it would be very easy to get there if the build was, you know, not two builds at once. <laughs> and now we have spores being thrown down. This is due to uh, just lack of scouting. It's or just just kidding. Holy shit, muffin. I'm so sorry. I take it back. I thought you were just doing it at 4:30 because you were like, I don't know what he's doing really. We'll just assume. I'm, I apologize. I take it all back. You do know 100% that he's upgrading something on a tech lab here, which most likely seems like it's either going to be cyclones or hellions. Uh, and then also you see he has a tech lab on a starport. These are well timed spores. I take it back. Apologies. Good spore, good spore color timing. Um, but we have the kind of the same problem again, though, that uh, we talked about before, too, which is you don't have any scouts at your third. And uh, having lack of scouting at the third is a big deal. Like, you can see the edge of the middle line here, which is at least that's good. You can see if he's going to have SCVs mining it. But it's a good thing to know if he actually has a base being built here or being landed here or something. Okay, you're going for an overseer. You're going to scout in. And you, okay, now you see the third command center. I like this. Uh, this, seeing this, if I were you right now, this is what I would do. Before I, before I see what you do to make a choice here, if I see, oh, he's got a third base. My immediate reaction would be take one of these drones, take a fourth immediately, and make sure everything I have is fully saturated. This is good. This is missing a gas. This is missing a worker on your, uh, uh, another one more worker on your middle line and then six drones for your gas. Cause these drones are, are actually running to the middle line. So they count as part of the 15. Um, so yeah, you just need, uh, and there's the last drone. You just need to get your, get, um, your drone saturated properly. Every, you need to be at 66 drones basically. This is easier. I'm not going to do all the math here and say, make things sound confusing. You just need to get to 66, make 10 more fucking drones. Get to 66 immediately and take a fourth base. That's your goal right now. That should be your goal. And then you should, uh, as you scout further in and you see what he's doing, you can try to then also go, what do I want to make with what, like, what do I, what do I have? And what do I need to start making to deal with what he's doing? And if I was you and I saw, okay, he's got factory, 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 factory. He's going mech. He's also got three bases. I'm going to make my drones. I'm going to make an infestation pit. And I'm going to make a spire. Sorry, I missed you eating yogurt XD. No problem. It was delicious. Thank you very much for the bits, Gammy. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you want to... Uh, I would say make, making a spire and an infestation pit here would be great. Making a hydrogen, I hope you don't do it. It's really bad. Uh, because going Roach Hydra against like... Tank heavy Terrans or a Cyclone Hellion, Cyclone Hellion or tank heavy Terrans, it's really bad because it just it just sucks. It's it's not great. It it doesn't trade very well. The only time it ever does uh, anything is if you have Viper, and even then, like it's not a great idea. There's so much easier things you could be doing, and it just yeah. We'll see we'll see how you do it. We'll see we'll see your choices now. Rob, thank you for the bit, bro. Thank you for the bit. So you know he's going mech, and what do you do as a response? What's your choice? You make a bailing nest. You made a roach horn, you canceled a roach horn. So here's the scout again. I had to back it up for a second just to see this, just to make sure I didn't I saw that correctly. Okay, so we have an infestation pit, a uh, bailing nest, and this is the problem right here. See, this is this is the mistake. Look at your unit count right now. You already have six roaches. Okay, you already have six roaches. You already have four lings from the early game still, and you have uh, two cyclones, eight hellions. Or sorry, uh, that's him. Uh, what I meant to say was you have six roaches, six queens, and four lings. Right. This is more than enough to defend this. This Zerg army, currently active right now, could defend this active Terran army. No problem. 
You should feel confident in the fact that you could totally defend this, especially if he has to do something like run up a ramp into your base. And the reason why you should feel confident about this is not because you're like, I scouted his army and I know I can beat it. That's not at all why you sh what should make you feel confident. What should make you feel confident is that if your build is, in, at, at, like, if it is at all in the realm of efficiency, if it's even anywhere in the realm of actually, it's kind of efficient. Yeah, I could see some efficiency here. If it's in there at all, okay? Just because you saw he has a third command center tells you, yeah, I can fully saturate three bases. Because your build is not slow. You already should be fully saturated, by the way. At 6 minutes 30, it should have been done already. You should be fully saturated with 66 drones at 6 minutes. Just throwing that out there. Uh, if your opponent is not doing anything aggressive, which you saw he you saw he went 1-1-1, and with, like, just, we'll say, being safe against 1-1-1, you could have been saturated at, like, 6-10. Because you could have made, like, you know, a few lings, and then you would have, like, more than maybe you would have needed, or a few roaches. I only say lings because you went for speed. But with the build where you're going roaches and plus one range weapons and shit, you could have made like five roaches, which would have delayed your saturation instead of hitting at six minutes, it would be like six ten. And then you'd be there already. But you but every time I've watched one of your games, it's always the same problem. You keep making choices where you just never fucking saturate. You make choices where you go for like two builds at once and you just it fucks up your saturation early. And then now you're making a choice where you scouted a third command center early. And now your choice is, I'm make two drones instead of what you need is 10. Or you need 12, rather, because you're at 54. Uh, you need 12 drones because you made two things here, which is why you need 12 now instead. Uh, and then you make 12 roaches instead now. Instead of, th like, this should be reversed. There should be 12 drones and two roaches. Because there's nothing that's going to kill you. Even if he attacks you right now, and these are 12 drones, 100% you're fine. Because you can make roaches after you're fully saturated, and you would make them fast enough to not die here. 100%. So now we have a bunch of roaches that have been made that are literally chilling under saturated mineral lines. And you're making more roaches. You're playing way too cautious. Like, you're playing. It's not even cautious. Cautious is a bad word to use here. You're playing way too scared right now. It's because you have no understanding. Of uh, what is capable of what what your opponent is capable of, and your opponent if your opponent goes for a third base, and you saturate efficiently if you are like again you're, if you are in the realm of efficiency, and your opponent goes for a third, there is no way you can die. If you go for a standard roach uh, drone build, like we like like you did a a build that was almost there. It was almost there. If you just cut out the third super early and made it a little bit later and cut out the zergling speed, used your larva a little bit more efficiently, took a third at full saturation of your natural on your mineral line, so at 16 drones here, not 22. At 16, you take a third base, and then you can make a few roaches, like we'll say like six roaches or so, and then go back to like going, oh, he's got a third. And then you just fully saturate your third and then make roaches. If you just do it in that order, what I just said, and if you if it's too confusing, this is a YouTube video, or it's gonna be for the people on Twitch. You can just replay that clip over and over. What I just said, it'll uh, make a lot of sense. You'll be like, oh wow, I actually could do that. And from seven minutes right now, where we're currently at, your supply could be like 120. It'd be it'd be close, right? It would be close to what you're currently at right now. Probably like 120, 125, somewhere in there. Really, really close to what you're currently at. <coughs> but the rate at which you would continuously build supply on top of that would be faster because you would just have full saturation already and you would not be undersaturated. You could actually max going roaches if you really were that scared. You could max on roaches by like 8 minutes to like 8 minutes and 20 seconds playing like this. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that in mind and we'll see where you're at at 8 minutes to 8 minutes 20. I'm guessing it's going to be around 140 supply because you're undersaturated constantly and you're, you keep bouncing back and forth of your choices. But a great way to play against this, I would highly recommend uh, Mass Roaches, or what you're doing already, Roach Infester. You're already making the Infester upgrade. This is great. Honestly, I think you should probably cancel this. I, I used to actually adv advocate Banelings as well against this, but I, I have uh, since then retracted my previous statements. 
So I'm not going to really hold you, hold it against you this time because I used to actually tell people to do this. I don't think you should do this anymore. Uh, because roaches, if you just make enough roaches with enough fungal, like if you have five infestors with a good amount of roaches, 100% you can hold this. Don't need it. Uh, you can hold, sorry, you can hold against this with roach infester. You do not need banes. You really don't. It's, it's, it's excessive. Don't need them. I think banelings are something that would be useful late game. If your opponent wanted to go literally max Hellion Cyclone, and it was a lot of Cyclones. If you want to have like Broodlord Infester Baneling, then that would be okay, I think. Uh, but if, if it's like early to mid game like this, and your opponent's just doing this as an opener, I don't think you should make Banelings. So I still see I still see merit to Banelings for late, like max supply in-game scenarios to cover Broodlords, but it's not really useful. It's not, it's not really needed early on, and all it does is it kind of slows you down. But look at this. 8 minutes to 8.20. You could be maxed right now. We're at 8.09, and you're at 1.46. And let's look at the worker count, shall we? You're at 68. You have, you have eventually hit the ideal saturation, which is uh, it's fine. But just imagine if you were maxed right now. And then this guy takes a timing, and you crush the shit out of his army, and you know he has three bases. Okay? Imagine if you're maxed, you crushed his army, but you lost, let's say, 40 supply during the fight. Because it, it was a bit of a trade that happens there. Imagine, because you now have map control, because you just won a big fight, if you followed up that fight with saturating a fourth base, and now your worker count would go from 66 to, like, 80... 85. 88. You just saturate a fourth base and then you start a fifth base. Because you're, you're, you're you know, like you're, uh, you were going for that roach max to be like, I got to deal with Hellion Cyclone this way. Roaches, maybe I had two infestors or whatever. Who gives a shit? I don't know. You have a couple infestors. But, uh, you make, you, you have map control now. He takes a fight. And then suddenly you have a fourth base saturated. Because nothing's really died this game. So you guys haven't really fought each other. So I understand why you're being a little bit scared. But it's because you don't really understand and comprehend what your opponent's capable of. And you just got to know that um, the first six minutes of the game are very crucial. And if you just, if you just can, if you can at least like hit that realm of efficiency a little bit in the first six minutes, the rest of the game becomes really basic. Like you can just make your units and be like, oh, I want to fight. I can drone a little bit. I didn't win a fight or a fight hasn't happened yet. Let's just make units because I'm already at ideal saturation. To start a game off, basically. It's so easy if you just look at it like that. But instead of being like, am I going to die? I don't know. I don't, do I need this? I don't know. Do I need that? He might do something. I have no idea. Like, you don't got to think about any of that shit. It's just efficiency. Alright, so I'm going to pause one more time really fast. Or no, I'm not. I'm just going to let it play because it's not fighting anymore. The best way to take a fight against Hellion Cyclone is if you have only units that, like, if you don't have Infestors, flanking it is huge. If you do have Infestors, fungling it is huge. Good fungal. Uh, I would say you kind of missed a little bit of opportunity, a, a little bit of an opportunity there, though. For Infestors, here's what you should kind of be doing. Like, the hardest part about getting an Infestor to work properly is landing the first Fungal. But the second you have a Fungal landed, you really need to follow... It's much easier once you have it landed, but what you really need to do is follow up another Fungal. And another Fungal. And another one. And another one. And another one. Because if you don't land... If you don't follow up Fungals, you're not going to kill the whole army in one Fungal. But landing the first one is hardest because that's when units are still moving full speed. But if you just land a fungal like this, and then you just give it to him and go, all right, I'm not going to chain it. There's nothing stopping him from just running away and losing minim taking minimal losses. Like losing little instead of a lot. Out of that fungal, you killed two cyclones, three cyclones, and you're letting him kind of like back up with the other ones. And now these units are kiting you again. You are r r like... Um, you did kind of like cut off his retreat path, but just imagine if it was another map where these rocks don't exist and he just runs away from your base. 
that would be a situation where it's like you had the chance to kill a lot and you just only killed a little bit instead. So don't think that this situation where it's like he has to wrap around because it's it, this map is designed this way. Don't think that that's, that was like, oh, it was well done. You really need to uh, chain the fungal for real. It's a big deal. If you're going to use infestors, you really need to chain the fungal. Oh my god, that is the luckiest raven ever. Watch, this raven somehow stays alive for like the next 10 minutes and it just gets like 40 kills over time because it keeps throwing turrets down and shit. <laughs> oh, would that suck? Alright, anyways. You want to fight? We'll go back to your choice of macro after the fight was over. So, fight happens. Fight now ends. You're currently at 68 workers, and you now your choice is to make more infestors. I don't disagree with this. So far, I do disagree with the carapace, but I don't disagree because the carapace it doesn't do anything. Just throwing this out there, if your opponent's going Hellion Cyclone, Hellion Cyclone is all about doing lock-ons to your units and blowing them up with lock-on. It's not about Hellions auto-attacking your units, and also Cyclones cannot auto-attack when they're currently locked onto a unit, and that's all they're really going to be doing. And lastly, a lock-on is considered a spell. It's not considered an auto-attack. A lock-on's damage does not get reduced from armor. And even if it did, it wouldn't matter. Because it hits for fucking 40 against the roach if you have the upgrade, which he does. And if we were to go like this, if we were to go, all right, 40, 40, 40, 40. That's uh, 40, 80, 120, 160. If we had one armor here, and it's now 39, 39, 39, 39, instead of 40, 80, 120, 160, it's now 39, uh, 78, 117, 150, uh, 156. It's still enough to kill a roach in four hits either way. It makes no difference if you do or don't have a carapace upgrade. And the early game is all about, you know, setting the pace for the rest of the game. And getting this carapace upgrade is all it's doing against his against his composition is setting you behind. This inf this uh, this upgrade could be another infester. It could be six more roaches, because it's the same cost of one carapace upgrade is the same cost as six roaches for gas. And gas, as we can see here, is your restricting resource. You don't have a restriction on your minerals because you've got you've expanded a lot. Minerals are way easier to come by than gas. And you're going for a composition that is gas heavy. You're going Roach Infester. Infester is why it's gas heavy, by the way. So, you need all the gas you can get, and this is a waste of your gas. But after the fight's over, you do make eight drones. I like that. I don't. Th I still don't think it's enough, though, because if we look at when the eight drones are done, let's look at your overall economy. It's seventy-five. You're real close. But right now, I would love it if you were, like, literally 10 drones higher than you already are. I would love it if you, w if you would really try to get anywhere in the, in the range of 80 to 88. 88 would be ideal. 80 is acceptable, though, because what happens is, is you, 88 drones is the exact number for four perfectly saturated bases. But that's never actually going to happen because by the time you get to, like, four saturated bases like that, your main's going to be mining out. You're going to have a fifth base. You'll start a sixth base. Your natural's going to start mining out. A lot of times what will happen is you'll have usually five to six bases of gases running because you're expanding to fix unsaturated mineral lines. And you'll usually have, uh, um, you know, like uh, four, uh, or not, sorry, not four, like three and a half um, saturated mineral lines where it'll be like you'll, you'll have three bases or even maybe two bases fully saturated with minerals. But then you'll have like uh, like two or three bases with maybe 10 out of uh, 10 drones that can only be active on it, or 12 or 8. You have all these little patches that are starting to mine out everywhere. So, 5 to 6 bases of gas, and then realistically, you'll have like 4 bases mining at any point in time on minerals, but some of those will be undersaturated. Like, you'll, like this, for instance. It'll look like this on some of the bases sometimes. You'll just have like less than ideal saturation. But 88 drones is amazing. 85 is amazing. It's still not as great as 88. 85 is really good though. 80 is acceptable. 74 is under.
72 is even less acceptable. You're getting close back. You're getting actually... Okay, you're making more. Thank God. Okay, perfect. Dude, I love it. Okay, now... I'm liking your economy now. It did take you, though, 10 minutes to get here. If I if I wanted to critique you on anything. I, I can't just praise people for doing something, even though I, I want them to do it. I like that you're here eventually. But I would have loved it if you would have been here now. Like, three minutes ago. When I said you... Or, sorry, not, not three minutes. Two minutes ago. It was two minutes. I don't want to be too hard on you. At two minutes ago, at eight minutes and 18 seconds, when your opponent had his Hellions and, and Cyclones and that one Raven that attacked you, and you fungled him and shit, Ooh, yeah. as soon as that died, you could have droned up to this point right then. And you could have already been on a good drone count for the last, like, 90 seconds. Instead of just now. Which would, again, mean your supply would be maxed again, guaranteed already. Like, you would just have so much more money, so much more army. Your money is getting a bit high, though, so you're also kind of not macroing the best here. Uh, what are you doing in terms of choice? You're going for a couple macro hatches. I'm not against this. I actually think this is a great idea because um, you, if, if you're having a little bit of money problems, this is a wonderful idea. I like this. I was about to recommend you do this as well, but you've, you've done it already. So, do this in all your games if you're ever having uh, issues spending your money. In terms of production, I like this upgrade. Uh, if you, since you're already trying to use Infestors and you're also going against Mech, this upgrade is insanely good. It is like the perfect way to stop a Thor army. And a lot of times, what your opponent's doing right here... If your opponent cannot win with this the army with this... Or, uh, sorry. If the Terran cannot win the game with this army, a lot of times what will happen is they will then switch this army into Thors. It just, it's just the natural evolution of things for Terran. And this upgrade is a great way to say Thor's can't do shit. It's amazing. This upgrade is a waste. Uh, don't need it for the reasons we just explained earlier. You really just don't need it against mech on the ground. It's irrelevant. This upgrade is great. Uh, it it will, a opens up access for you to um, attack with your Ling's late game. Uh, and maybe like harass economy, kill bases, just do counterattacks basically. It's not ever supposed to be part of your army. It's amazing for counterattack damage though. And this upgrade, uh, range weapons is okay. It's not bad. It's not great. I would, and as weird as this sounds, I would rather you have stopped at level one or maybe even level two range weapons and gone into melee and started going into melee level three because this is why. I would love it if actually it was just level one melee. And this is why. The closer you get to max supply, the shittier this unit right here, the Roach, becomes. This unit should actually have an... It should, you could literally delete the name Roach and rewrite a word called Transition. This, this unit is literally... It should be called Transition because that's the purpose that it serves. It tra this unit transitions you from the early game to the late game, but as soon as you get late game, you should literally never make this unit again. This unit sucks absolute ass late game, and investing into a level 3 missile weapon means that you're probably invested into going roaches all game. This unit is so bad, the only time this unit works well is if you can repeatedly bash your opponent and keep your opponent low supply or low unit count of things that would kill the roaches. You're not playing aggressive, though. You're not playing uh, this like aggressive style that keeps your opponent low and like throwing bodies at him constantly. What you're doing is you're transitioning to hive tech and you're playing a passive turtley game, which means your, your opponent's going to max out. Every single time your opponent gets one higher supply than previously, a roach gets shittier than it was before. So I would love it if you didn't have the idea of sticking to roaches the entire time and going into maybe something like a spire. Uh, and then you go, like, you can replace the Roach at the Broodlord if you're going to play a passive game. Uh, and then if you prioritize level 3 melee, that buffs not only Zerglings for counterattacks, but it buffs Broodlings that come out of Broodlords, which is great. And then you, uh, later on, after you have level 3 melee, you could then go back and get the rest of your range weapon upgrades for level 3 range weapon. Because the only thing, honestly, that this really does get, give a positive impact to late game is your Infested Terrans. And the reason why I say that, because I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, Hydra's dude, Queens, bro! Against Terran, maxed out armies, if you're making mass Queens, you're going to lose, because Ghost can just uh, wipe, the, wipe the floor with you, no problem. 
Transfuse sucks ass now at healing through burst damage of like mass Thors or something like that. It's just really not efficient. You don't really want to be going queen heavy or you're going to probably die. You also don't really want to be going queen heavy or um, you also don't really want to be going Hydra heavy either because Hydras are the same. They're kind of in the same boat, but not as deep as a Roaches where Hydras, if your composition is like literally just mass Hydras, it's not the greatest if your opponent gets closer to max supply. They are better than Roaches though, but you would be much better off having one Broodlord instead of two Hydras. Especially if you're going to have to break through like siege mech super powerful armies. If this guy were to go like mass Liberator, Hellion Cyclone, and you're like, I have max Hydras or I have max Roaches, you're going to trade in a, in a situation where it's like you lose 100 supply and the Terran might lose 6. And you're like, oh, I didn't go very well. My army just got meat grindered pretty hard. But if you were to take the same supply and put it into like something more efficient, like let's say Broodlords, suddenly you can take a realistic fight and you can trade back and forth and your army is very powerful. Uh, letting like Hydras also once again kind of fall into the same category as Roaches where if you're going to go Hydras, ideally you want to be aggressive and you want to keep your opponent's supply away from max. If you, if you allow your opponent to max out and you're going Roach or Hydra compositions, you're going to have a bad day. It's going to be really hard for you to take good fights. Alright, so we'll see what we do. So now you have the idea you want to go Spire. I like this. But I don't like the upgrade of level 3 range weapons now. It doesn't, it doesn't synergize again. You should be going for melee if your idea is to go for a Spire. And also the Spire should have been started a lot sooner. You should start the... the if you want to go for a Spire, you should start the Spire when you start a Hive. And you've had a Hive for a long time. Okay. So now we're going to talk about uh, fighting. We'll, we'll, we'll watch this and we'll talk about it. Okay. So first things first. I just want to throw this out there. And I want to kind of go off of what we just talked about a second ago. If you're in a situation where your opponent is maxed out on Cyclone Hillion and you are maxed out on Roach uh, Infester, just know that this is bad for you already. This, you should not look at this and go, oh, Zerg and Terran, even game. This is about an even game. No. No, it's not. Because Roaches scale like shit. <laughs> Roaches are actually really bad at scaling well. So, to make this fight fair, okay... This, this would be, this would be, I'll, let me tell you what an even fight would actually be. There are 26 Hellions and 23 Cyclones. And you have 44 Roaches. Okay? To make this fight fair and even, if you're both maxed out, you would need the Terran to, instead of having 23 Cyclones, he should have, uh, like 13. And the rest of that supply that is now missing, that should be Hellions. Because the Cyclone is 3 supply, so it's going to be a little bit more. If we take away 10, let's just, let's just say it's 1.5. Uh, we take away 10 Cyclones and we add in 15 Hellions. Okay, so the Supply of the Terran would be now 41 Hellions and only 13 Cyclones. That would be a fair fight with your current army. Because there'd be way less real damage in his army and it would be a lot of just kind of useless units that are just fodder, which is exactly what this unit is. When you max out, this unit honestly is pretty useless. It's just kind of fodder. You really need something behind it to do shit for you to like to really get the job done. This unit is like a Broodlord, for instance. This unit is just not great, and you're going to get kited all day. So with that being said, just know that that this position, even though it's, it looks equal, is bad for Zerg because our composition... Blah, blah, let me take a drink of water, sorry. Really quick. Five second pause. Okay. Our composition for Zerg is just bad. It's just bad. Now... If the Terran's pushing like this, the best way you can fight this, instead of charging forward and going into a choke point yourself and going, let's get the Terran, what you could do instead, if you're stuck on Roach Hydra like, or on Roach Infester like this, is make some of your Roaches go up here, make some of your Roaches go over here. Just wait. Guard the choke yourself. And if this guy commits into a choke point, you can fungal him as he's in a choke point because what happens 
is when he's when he's if his army's all right here, okay? And you're like, I fungled him, and now he wants to run away. His units have to be like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, as they like have to one by one have a traffic jam, because a bigger, fatter army is trying to squeeze through a tighter choke point. That would be one way you could do it. It would give you more of an efficient trade. And if he actually makes it all the way through the choke point and gets over here, don't chase him. Use that supply that you and him both lost. He'll remake what he has. You can remake your current dead roaches into broodlords or something better. That's one way you could do it. Another way you could do it is instead of going for uh, um, fungal growth, like spam fungal growth on him, like you know, repeatedly chain them. You could do it maybe just one time, just one fungal growth to just to initially set the fight up. This is harder, but you could do this. Same thing. Roach is here. Roach is here. Your infestors could be over here too. He commits closer into your base. You fungal him once. He starts trying to run away. And as he tries to run away, you neural parasite like five or six of his front uh, cyclones. And then if he, cha if he decides, you know what? I'm going to come back now. I'm going to come back and attack you with, with whatever I have. If he does not dive... The cyclone, or if he does not dive his army onto your infestors through your roaches, just know that a neural parasite resets the cooldown. It re it resets the target of a lock on. Even if, even, like, if you have an infestor that's currently being locked on, or uh, if you have two cyclones locking onto Zerg units, it doesn't really matter. I just want to say if, if a lock on is currently happening, an infestor neural parasites that cyclone that is currently casting a lock on. It cancels the lock-on no matter what happens. Whether the unit is dead already, whether it's not dead. Lock-on stops. It just ends as soon as the Neural Parasite affects that Cyclone, which immediately puts that spell back on cooldown. And if he dives forward onto your units, you can relock on all of his other Cyclones with all of his Cyclones. And a Cyclone kills another Cyclone in three fucking hits with this upgrade. So you'll just... You'll see... Like, a couple seconds go by, lock-on reinitiates on a lot of other Cyclones. And out of nowhere, eight Cyclones just explode. Or six, or however many you've neuraled. Which is huge, because you literally just eliminated... You just doubled your neural in terms of eliminating his army. So how many neurals do you have available? You, have, you would have seven. He has 25 Cyclones now. If I neural seven Cyclones, and then four seconds later, he's running this way, and he's like, Oh shit, I'm gonna run back. And fight the Zerg. And now, suddenly, seven of his own Cyclones kill the another seven of his Cyclones. We can now say that, effectively, he has only 11 Cyclones, because we just got rid of uh, of uh, 14 of them. 7 plus 7 is 14, and 14 minus tw uh, 25 minus 14 is 11. So we just got rid of, like, more than half of his Cyclones, because we casted Neural Parasite. Does that make sense? Like, that would be a better way to take this fight as well, if we really had to. <clears throat> and then you could just... Uh, and then if he doesn't... If he does not... Um, because those cyclones that are still neuraled will still be neuraled, by the way. Neural is like a 9 second cast duration. Or it's 11 seconds. My bad. Sorry. It's 11 seconds of duration here. You would actually have enough time to, to start initiating a second neural parasite. Or, I mean, uh, sorry. The neural parasite you've already cast would have time to initiate a second lock-on. Is what I tried to say right there. And it's still hit. Like, you're you still have that in your army hitting his army. It's still doing it. It's still there. <clears throat> now, let's say it's the other side of things where you would... Let's say you went for a Neural Parasite and he just went, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to run away. I don't want to fight that shit. Well, you just get seven Cyclones for free then. He runs away and his Cyclone count goes instead of 25 now. It goes down to... Uh, 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 eight. Jesus, 18? Sorry. It goes down to 18. And you just get seven cyclones for free. That just you can just pull them back because you can control them. You just green box them and go run over here now. And they walk into your roaches, and you have your roaches just kill them all. And easy peasy, you just eliminated seven cyclones at no losses, really. So there are multiple ways you can take fights that are better than the way you did, but just chasing him. If you notice, this is what happens when you fight against cyclones when it's a big blob of shit. What happens is, there's too many roaches that get in the way of the infestors, and you cannot efficiently cast fungal growth anymore. So you might land the first or the second one, but what's going to happen is, is your roaches are going to be in the way of your infestors, and he's going to start kiting you without being fungal again. And we'll see, we'll just watch, that's what's going to happen if, if we look at a blob versus a blob, which is max versus max. You might get one or two off, but you'll never really truly be able to get a good fungal off continuously. 
Because your roaches block too much of your area. There's a couple good fungals. He's not really trying to kite you. He's trying to concave you, which is weird. 100% he could be kiting you. Because all you got to do with cyclones is you just A-move for one second within range of roaches. Like 15 lock-ons get cast automatically on 15 different roaches. And you just move back a little bit. And then all the roaches just get picked apart. But now, once again, we're having the situation where your infestors are just in the back. And your army is just bleeding out. He, this guy is not really kiting. He's just concaving. He's not really using this army right either, to be honest. But uh, even though he's not even using this army really that much, uh, like, that correctly at all, it's just it comes down to the fact that roaches just suck ass at max fights. Like, he actually let you fungal him a lot because he didn't really kite you. See, he understands that all you gotta do is A-move for a second and it auto-locks on and you just start kiting. But he didn't kill enough creep. Uh, you actually replanted that during the fight, which was super... I actually will commend you on that. That was juicy. That was really good. Fixing your creep before it recedes all the way back is amazing. Really, 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 really good. But um, still, the problem lies with the composition overall. and That's why that whole fight went kind of bad. So moving forward, moving on. Let's see what you decide to remax on. I like that you're getting melee. I hate that you're getting carapace right now. On your air. So I'm going to elaborate. Uh, and you also, I'm not going to really harp on you too much about all the roaches you currently have because you've chosen to go for a counter swing, like a counter pressure attack. Like you absorbed, and now you're trying to pre counter pressure as hard as possible. So I'm not going to... like The logic behind that would be you need to make a lot of roaches. What I would hate, though, is if you made all these roaches and you just fucking sat here again. I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? Why are you doing this? Because this actually makes sense if you're going to do it like this. Because you just want to fight, and now suddenly it's not equal supply versus equal supply. You have a, a supply advantage, which makes the roaches actually good again. A roach is only good if you overwhelm your opponent. It's so fucking bad if you let them catch up to you in supply. And you're just like, let's fight equal supply. When you have better tech units than me. So, uh, yeah, this makes sense with how you're attacking with the roaches. But um, this carapace upgrade on the spire, it does not make sense, however, because it does not reduce any damage that you're currently taking against his current composition. Oh. Yeah. The only unit that would make sense to build this carapace upgrade against would be a battlecruiser or a liberator. It would also not make sense to make it against a uh, Thor because a Thor is not going to take any more hits than it already does to kill your broodlords on high impact payload, which is the only part of that fight that matters. It is the only part that matters. Can the can the broodlords win high impact against high impact payload Thors or can the broodlord or are the broodlords going to die? And to be honest, the weapon will help your broodlords burst down the Thors faster. Uh, it will increase each time you upgrade weapons for a broodlord, it gives them plus two. So in total, you can get plus six. And if you have like 10 broodlords, that's now 60 more damage your broodlords could be doing each volley, which is a substantial amount when a Thor has 400 hit points. 60 is quite a bit. Um, it will, and also you got to keep in mind too, the broodlings are constantly going to be sucking the life out of the Thors basically. They're just poking them, trying to rip the gears out of the legs and shit. And if a Thor is a little bit bruised, it increases your chances of one shotting it with a decent amount of rude lords. Weapon would be better here. Uh, against his current composition. It doesn't reduce the damage of a Cyclone's missile, which is the only thing you have to worry about at the moment. Because this guy is a Hellion Cyclone Master. Okay, now one more time. This is another idea for microing. If your opponent is trying to lock onto you and kite and run away, he's not really trying to save his SCVs super hard. He's not diving his Cyclones in because he wants to actually keep the Cyclones alive. What you should be doing is you should actually cut your Roaches up in like halves. Half your Roaches or maybe like two thirds and one third. One third going to the middle line or half going to the middle line. Both are acceptable. But if, instead of having your Roaches go left, right, left, right, left, right, every time he goes left, right, just send some Roaches to the middle line and just fucking let it happen. And then have the other roaches ram his cyclones. And even if he kites you all the way back, 
It doesn't matter because these roaches, the whole point of them is to do damage as much as you can. And if he lets an entire mineral line die because he's kiting roaches all day, that's still a that's still a great fight for you as Zerg. That's still a win-win. Because these roaches are not like... It's not like, oh, these roaches are dead. I'm dead. It's just counter pressure at the moment. And you're doing as much as you can with it. But wasting time going back and forth, back and forth, as he goes back and forth with Cyclones, is going to actually keep a lot more of his SCVs alive that shouldn't be alive. You're doing it. A little bit. I like it. It took you a little bit longer to do it than I would have liked, but you're still doing it. If you would have done it a little bit sooner, guaranteed you could have killed all the SCVs here. But he's still. But now, with how it kind of happened, he saves 10 SCVs. 11, sorry. There's another one on gas. There's 11 SCVs. So you didn't kill as much as you could have. That's a missed opportunity there. But you had the right idea. I still like. I like that eventually you did it, though. Just do it more faster. Do it faster next time. I do not like this though. What the fuck is this? Why? So Also, I don't like this either. You're also I didn't realize this. You're getting You're getting a carapace upgrade before you even get a greater spire. A greater spire is the biggest priority here. 100%. Like what this tells me right now. This is what this tells me. You are fighting against a guy going Mass Hellion Cyclone, and you're getting Carapace... You're getting Corruptors with Carapace before getting a Greater Spire. And th what this makes me think is you're thinking that this guy is going to suddenly just attack you with Battlecruisers. You're like, he's going to make BCs. I don't want to die to BCs. I'm gonna, that's going to fuck me up. I just, I just insta-lose if he goes BCs. <coughs> <coughs> and, um... You're looking at the game in a way where you're never going to understand the game if that's how you look at it. And let me try to explain this. I'll try my best. If your goal right now is to make these Corruptors because of the possibility of BCs, you definitely need to have needed to have been throughout this entire game a lot more aggressive with your Roach Army. I like that you have... Uh, Push this guy back to three bases. I like that. But you continuously and repeatedly sit on defense and let him attack first, and then you're trying to counter things that you don't know are happening or not. And then once he makes a choice, then you respond. This is really, really, really incorrect. You're playing the game really incorrectly if you're playing like this, because what's happening is, is you actually don't know what he's doing. But you could figure out what he's doing. If, you're, if your plan is to go mass roaches, mass roaches, mass roaches, mass roaches, you could keep him from maxing the entire time by trying to take as good of fights as you can. And he will reveal what tech he has while you attack him. 100%. If you're attacking his base, he's going to defend his base with something. And if you're keeping him low supply by doing damage, if, you, if that's your goal... Uh, you're hopefully doing lots of damage, but he's showing you what he's making to defend his base. No one's going to be like, I'll just let my third die. I'll let my natural die. I'll fucking let my main die because I got a surprise for you. <laughs> no, they're going to defend their bases, obviously. You know what I mean? Uh, they're going to defend their bases. And that shows you what he's doing. So then it alleviates all cause for concern of being like, what if he's going battlecruisers? Or something like that. Uh, and... Yeah. And if you actually had gone for a Greater Spire... <clears throat> if you had actually gone for a Greater Spire instead of a Carapace upgrade... The fight that happened here when you happened to be maxed on Roaches and he was maxed on Hellion Cyclone... Again, I don't like that that happened. But if that does happen... And then you and then you launched a counterattack. I was like, alright, it's okay to kind of just do a surge of production of Roaches for a counterattack. But you know what would have been really great if you did that? Just make like eight broodlords or sorry like uh, eight corruptors as you surge across the map it's just eight one corruptor is the same supply as one roach you weren't even maxed when it happened either you were at like 178 supply and eight corruptors is 16 supply so you still wouldn't have been maxed even if you made the corruptor but my point is is if you're going to launch a counterattack and your goal is to go if you do eventually want to go broodlord 
and your goal is, okay, I'm going to go Broodlord, it would be a really smart idea to make the Corruptor, as you start the attack from your base, like you start chasing across the map and you make a Corruptor now. And then by the time you're like in his mineral line and I'm do we're doing that thing where it's like, he's kiting, let's split up our roaches. You're starting Broodlords then because your Corruptors are now done. And now you can make Broods. Your, your roaches kill some SCVs. They all bleed out and die to the, to the Cyclones eventually because we weren't planning on winning the game there. We were just planning on shoving him back defensively, and we'll, while we shove, do as much damage do as much damage as we can. But inevitably, there's going to be a counter shove again, just like we did to him. He's going to do it to us. He's going to be like, "Okay, we just killed a bunch of roaches. Let's shove him now." It's a back and forth tempo of how StarCraft games work. But suddenly, if we would make roaches at uh, like opportune times, like we just talked about, like right when you start going across the map to his base, you make corruptor. As you're in his base attacking, you, morph, you you can now you've had enough time to make them, and now you can morph those corruptors into broods. Now, by the time he counter shoves you across the map, when he's like halfway across the map, you have now had brood lords have enough time to be built, and also grouped up in your base, and now suddenly his attack can be shoved away by brood lord. And especially if you have infester, if you have fungal growth infesters with brood lords just launching broodlings and smacking shit with their auto attacks. This fight gets so easy to stop and kill it. Um, and it's just super good. Super duper, super duper good. Super duper. But what's going to happen again, though, is... Uh, if this Terran uses the, the philosophy of kiting with Cyclones, because we're stuck on Hellion... Uh, because we're stuck on Roach and Fester... It's not ideal for you. The only thing I say I would say that you have going for yourself right now is that you are you have actually done a little bit of damage to his economy and yours hasn't really been touched. You have successfully defended your economy regardless of how the game has gone so far. And his supply now is showing because of it. You, have, you now have a lead. So earlier in the fight over here, this is nowhere near as bad for you as it was before. But your composition is still not great because if this guy actually decided to just... Be a little bit more cautious and maybe kill creep a little bit more instead of going for your going for the throat basically he could have had a better chance to max out again and if he maxes out again that is once again an awful fight for you this guy is shoving way too aggressively like he's just going to the heart of creep what this means is this Terran he's basically hitting that gas pedal going this game needs to end now end it like he's, he's he sees a brick wall ahead of him and he's like let's just hit that shit full fucking speed instead of like stopping the car and like figuring out how a better way to deal with this we're just gonna speed up and hopefully just break through that brick wall <laughs> like he really wants this game to end you can tell because he's making mistakes really hard right now with how he's using his units And the reason why, too, this could be happening is if we look at his, uh, if he scanned your base, this would probably be a, a reason why this happened. And there you go. That is 100% why he did that. Looking at his vision, he scanned your base during the time you were making a spire. This is pretty early in the spire because it looks like a little zit. It's not even that big yet. This is probably when the spire was only like 10% of the way done. But he scouted a spire and a hive, which in his mind probably it just went, okay, I have about two minutes in this game before Broodlords come out. And Broodlords are pretty good against Hellion Cyclone. And he did this game quick. And his reaction to it is not going, I need to make a bunch of starports for Vikings or something better or Ghost or something. His reaction is, let's just power this shit over with a bunch of factories and hopefully just end the game before he has enough units to stop me. He's not stopping Hellion. He has not literally not deviated once from Hellion Cyclone production this entire time. Which makes sense as to why he's more aggressive now, because he really wasn't in the game before he has to deal with Broodlords. So that's how we can break down this guy's mentality. He's playing like a big all-inner, basically, but it makes sense. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. 
Okay, now you're making a greater spire. So yeah, just just in general, just know that always, always, no matter what, no matter what reason there may be, it does not matter what reason there may be, always try your best to, as soon as you start a hive, make a spire. And the second your hive is done, make a greater spire. Because the Broodlord, again, especially against something like mech like this, there is nothing more important in terms of army than this. Infestors are great. They're they're very close. Having infestors with like neural parasite and fungal and stuff, it's super close to being as important as this. But even that is not as important as this. This is like the most important thing. Because this is your golden ticket to end game. If you are going to play a game that is going to it is going to go above 150 supply for your opponent, this is required against mech. Every time, unless it's like 100% air. Super important. And realistically, who, what Terrans out there go 100% air? It happens, but it's really rare. And this guy, obviously, we're not even questioning what he's doing. He's been showing us Hellion Cyclone the entire game. So it's, it should be super obvious this game, if you play against somebody who plays like this. This is the most important part of the game. Getting your Broodlords out at a time, in a timely fashion. This is so ridiculously delayed. And the only reason why this game has not ended for the, with the Zerg being dead at this point is because this guy doesn't really micro Hellion Cyclone very well. This guy microed really, really aggressively up here. He did not kite. He just concaved. That's really bad. It's really an inefficient way to use Hellion Cyclone. And then uh, he also is getting paranoid now about the possibility of this. And he's overcommitting with his units too many times now. And he's now forcing himself to take fights where he's always at like 50 or 40 supply of a disadvantage. So this Terran's not playing the game very well, honestly. Uh, it's the only reason why you're not dead yet. Nice fungal. Um, but again, with same same concept again. The hardest fungal to land is the first one. The hardest fungal to land is the first one because your opponent is going to make it harder for you to land that fungal. You have two fungals here. There's one. The second infester in the back here does not cast the fungal. You just like run them away. It's because you have the mentality of, I landed a fungal once, we're good. Just know that if this guy actually keeps running away from you, which he should be doing. No, you should, like, a cyclone should never be fucking concaving. Ever. It, ever. It's actually squishier than a roach. One cyclone is squishier than a roach. It is also like three times as fat as a roach. Look at the density of the concave here, and look at the density of the concave here. We have like four cyclones in this concave right there. Like realistically, you got that cyclone, that one, and that one, and that one. This cyclone cannot fit in this concave because it's currently being squeezed out by two big butt cheeks. But look at the concave of roaches. Look how dense this can be. And the same distance of that, you could have like twice the amount of roaches. Cyclones do not ever want to concave. Uh, so what, what a Terran's going to want to do is he's going to want to lock onto you and he's going to want to kite you. So when you actually land a fungal, you're, you're definitely going to want to chain it because if you let him run away, you're going to take way more losses than it's worth. Like that. Like he actually kited that time. So again, now after that fight's over, we just had another fight happen. Look at production really quick. We have melee going level two. Greater Spire's on the way. I really like melee. I feel like you could have had it a lot sooner. Because look at your money right now. This is a big reason why this upgrade is so juicy and so good. Uh, especially level three. Is because if you look at your money right now, this is always going to happen. I'm not saying you're macroing poorly. It's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is you're always going to have a disparity and minerals to gas, where the minerals are going to be way higher than your gas. When you go for styles like Roche, Infester, into Broodlord, into Corruptor. These kind of, this style is very, very, very gas expensive for Zerg. <clears throat> it's, it, takes, it takes a lot of time to get a proper death ball with this kind of a style. 
which means you're going to have your the thing that the thing that is like the delaying factor of this whole process is your gas income and you can't really like do anything about it because your gas is limited to what you currently can have it's going to happen no matter what because you're so you can mine minerals way faster than you can mine gas on every single base you own there's not six gases per expansion there's only two so what this means is is uh with your excess minerals it would be a great idea if you look at the map right now what if we had like 50 zerglings with plus three adrenal running over here right now you just you just said fuck it run them down and go down here see if we can kill a base what if we suddenly killed this base or what if a second ago when his army was over here attacking your creep and your your roaches and, and infestors and stuff what if we had 50 zerglings over here and we just said run into the natural and what if this was down and we just spent a little bit of our mineral bank a little bit here and here and there and everywhere just a little bit by a little bit every now and again we just spend like 500 minerals on zerglings and just go to a counterattack. two minutes later or one minute later 500 minerals five uh of zerglings go counterattack. suddenly some of them might pay off and we're like wow we just wiped out an entire mineral line and maybe the terran didn't even notice and we even killed the command center it could happen or we killed a bunch of depots or we actually started killing a bunch of add-ons we killed the upgrade for the terran we just do things that really hiccup his production and slow him down that we can easily afford rather than just sitting on a this massive mineral bank. It's not necessarily always a bad thing to have a big bank if you're going for a death ball style, especially if you're capable of maxing out and still having a bank. It's kind of stupid to be like, I have to deplete my bank all the time. That's, that's dumb. Stupid attacks are stupid attacks. There's no way to justify that. And thinking to yourself, I don't have a bank because I've done a lot of stupid attacks. That's just stupid mindset. Having a big bank is not bad, but you definitely could have used it a little bit more efficiently than you have this game if you just would have attempted to do a few run buys of Zerglings. <clears throat> Realistically. And, the, and lastly, I, I don't want to confuse anyone. The time I would tell you to start doing Zergling runbys is when you have just made Broodlords. Do not do... And like There should already have been Broodlords out. There are Corruptors flying around forever here. Uh, Zerglings should not be made as a priority to Roaches early on in the game if you, if you already have access to Roach Infester. Roach Infester is a great transition to go towards Broodlords. But once you actually have Broodlords, <clears throat> you do not want to ever make Roaches again and instead, you with that same larva you were making with roaches uh, for roaches before, you want to make that for zergling now. That's that's when you want to do zergling, and that will usually be around the time when you already have adrenal plus two weapons and maybe already plus three weapons. Uh, so if that hopefully that makes sense. You don't want to make it. You don't want to make lings way too early because lings actually just would run in and die to a bunch of blue flame hellions. It would be a joke how bad that would be. I like that you're making lings now, but these lings 100%. Like, you should, again, have broodlords already. These broodlords still haven't started yet. This is, like, I can't stress enough how this is, like, the most important thing that we haven't seen the entire game yet. But, uh, I like that you made zerglings, but if you use these zerglings in your one control group, this is not the right way to use them. They would be better off not being in a control group at all and just going, attack here, shift, attack here, shift, attack here, shift, attack here. Just like literally click behind the mineral line. Shift attack. Shift attack. Shift attack. And don't even touch them ever again. They would get more done that way than having them in your army. Because I kind of want to see what happens when you have them in your army. I want to watch them all just get roasted. Good. Okay. Good. Super good. Amazing. You've done it correctly. I thought you were actually going to use them in your army. for Like all of them in your army the whole time. Stuff like this is how you want to use them. Amazing. Super good. Watch how much damage these lings do. You made him pull a mineral line. You pull his entire army back home to defend his base, which means you have breathing room now to do whatever the fuck you want. You're killing SCVs in the process a little bit here and there. You're disrupting everything he's doing. You're making him have to focus on shit that's just annoying, and it buys you time to do whatever you want. He just fucked his gas up. Look, he he, he improperly resaturated his shit. You made him make mistakes. With one thing that it, one thing that took you literally probably two seconds, took him about six seconds to fix it, or seven seconds to fix it. 
that is something we like to call efficiency. Efficiency is not only with your resources. It's also with your time and time management. That was an efficient thing you just did right there. I would love to see more of it. Uh, that I would love to not see these things stay in your army. This is ridiculous as well. Uh, how, <laughs> how crazy you're being. His army is currently killing your creep. You see him killing your creep out here and you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's make broodlords really close to that. This is psycho. <laughs> and you know why this is happening? It's because you have your whole army in one control group. That's why it's happening. So the corruptors just happen to be here because they're following around your ground army. Um, I would say you'd be better off not hockeying your corruptors at all and leaving them in your base. If, you, if you're not comfortable putting broodlords in their own hockey, I don't mind if you put uh, broodlords in the hockey of this army after they're done. Even though I still don't think it's great, it would be okay. But the way you should do it, put... Just make corruptors. Don't even put them in a control group. Leave them, like, here at your base. Somewhere safe. And then once you make broodlords, then put the broodlords in your control group. That would be so much better than morphing broodlords like this. I hope this guy moves north and fucks you over for this. Because it should happen. This is really, really sloppy for Zerg to do this. There you go. Imagine if this was like six Broodlords and not just two, and all these Cyclones just locked onto them. Like they would have anyways. Only a couple locked onto them because there's only two. But if there were like six, he would have locked onto it as well. And suddenly... <laughs> Putting a lot of faith in this Terran player. <laughs> But you don't, want to, you don't want to know why that happened. It's because he once again didn't kite anything. The Terran player doesn't kite at all. Watch. Now watch him concave. He's like, fuck it. We're committed. Just throwing it out there for Terran players, that's not how you micro Hel Hellion Cyclone. You don't ever just man mode concave a fight. You kite shit. Because you want to know what the, the one thing that is useless, which is, I'm actually, I like that he understands the concept that you don't want to concave with his upgrades, which is exactly why you do not get weapon upgrades for Terran when you go Hellion Cyclone. But the other reason why you don't, you don't concave with Hellion Cyclone is because you don't do damage by auto attacking because a cyclone is the only real form of damage of this army and it doesn't have an auto attack when it's locking onto something it replaces the auto attack during the duration of a lock on and a lock on is like 11 range it's much bigger than its attack range which is 5 because a lock on expands really to a big circle when you're locking on and the whole idea of this army is that you can kill your opponent's army and thin it out Without really having to take a fight in a concave. Like in a, in a big straight up fight. You just pick at it. Until it gets really low. And then you overwhelm it. I feel like the Terran partially understands that. But he's, he's definitely not microing like that. He, his upgrades make him understand that. But his micro doesn't. Um, the only purpose of the Hellions. Is to absorb hits for the Cyclones. And to kill things like Zerglings. That would be faster than Roaches. Because if you're kiting and running away. What's going to happen to the Zerg if you're using Zerglings? The Zerglings are going to run ahead of everything else because they're faster. And then suddenly the Hellions are just like, hey, Zerglings, you're in range. One auto attack. <laughs> there goes 20 Lings. Let's back up a little bit more. Do it again. And all the Lings just die to kiting. So, it, it, yeah, the Terran definitely isn't microing it very well. But anyways, we're not talking about the Terran. We're talking about the Zerg. Lots of things we covered this game. Um, we, we covered a lot, but I'll go back and say like a couple of the most important ones. Number one, pick a build. Uh, you really need to commit to one build, not do everything at once. And, um, 
You can make it as simple as this. If you're going to go for a third base, go for a speedling queen third base. Stop fucking mining gas. Until you're fully saturated on two bases, and then you can start mining gas to go into a layer, a bailing nest, a roach worn then. Whatever the hell you want, but just know your opener of the game is going to be based off of queens and zerglings and creep spread and drones. Okay? That's that. And you can make static D if you need it or whatever. The other way, the other style you can do is you can get a gas and you can keep mining gas the whole time. Do not get zergling speed because you're going to be going for a two base layer roach evo chamber wall off style with a... Uh, no, yeah, your, your layer is going to be faster too because you're not getting speedlings. You're not getting lings at all this game, except for maybe the first four to kill a Reaper so that your drones don't all die to the initial harass. Because you have a Reaper spawn, a Reaper gets to your base before queens are even out. So the first four lings are acceptable, but anything beyond that is no. You don't want to be making more lings than that. You want to be going, you want to be making uh, like drones and roaches and stuff eventually when you have the proper economy. And then you can take a third when your natural is fully saturated and go from there. That's that kind of a style. And you can still make extra queens off your natural while your main is becoming a layer to do things like creep spread. That's totally fine as well. Those are your two builds. Pick one. Do not do both at the same time. This game you did both at the same time and all it did was fuck over your larva. Super bad. Uh, and everything. Like, it just, everything was inefficient because of it. Like, you couldn't really use your layer tech even though you rushed a layer because you're trying to spend your larva. You couldn't properly defend your third even though you made a third. And you couldn't do anything with that. You could, it was super risky. You didn't really have any creep spread because you couldn't afford to make queens because you're trying to do everything at once. Like, it was like, you're trying to do everything but really shitty. Rather than if you just do one thing really well, it would be ten times better. Um, that's number one. That's the most important one. That'll change the course of your games from here on out if you just follow that a lot better. The second one is uh, your uh, economy efficiency. Um, it goes kind of hand in hand with the opening of the build. It'll make a big difference. But if you ever scout someone who has like a third base, just know that you're more than within your rights to saturate your third fully easy. There's a pacing of a game. And if you just have something that can defend a harass, which is what you already had at that point when we talked about it earlier, which was like six roaches, four lings and six queens, that could easily defend eight, eight hillions and two cyclones. But instead, there was like 12 more roaches made because we're freaking out, even though you know he went for a third base. The only time making those roaches would make sense is if the guy was two base aligning you. But if you see a third command center, you already know he's not two base aligning you, especially if it's like already done, because that means he made it earlier, which means that if the earlier he makes a command center, the more he deviated away from mass production. Now, because it's like the same concept of like, like Protoss is easier to explain with this. If you got a Protoss player, who throws down a third nexus at six minutes after he's already had eight gateways for like fucking 40 seconds now. That's maybe not a real third. It could be a fake. It, it, like this guy might still just all in you. But if the Protoss player throws down a third base at like four minutes and 30 seconds, a full 90 seconds sooner than what we just were talking about. And you're like, okay, this guy's got a third. It's impossible for him to have that much production because he invested into economy first he didn't just make it after the fact and went, ah, oh, fuck it, we're canceling it, we're just owning. If the guy were to cancel his third then, he still wouldn't have gates done because he made the third nexus before he made production. Just like this guy made a third command center off of 111 before he made mass production. So there was no real, um, no real, like, pressure or, like, alarm for you to be, like, freaking out to be like, oh god, we're gonna die! We need roaches! 111 into a third command center is not an all-in. There's like, you can easily make just a little bit of units and queens and you'll be totally fine. You had one spore per base plus six queens plus six roaches and that could have, you were more than safe with that. To saturate your third fully and then make units. And then in the pacing of a game, if you're not really 100% sure, if you're not already around, if you, if, if you want to play a macro game and you're not already there, but you are at least at three base saturation, just know the perfect time to make drones is right after you win a big fight. It's always the perfect time to make drones. And you did do that really late though you won a big fight and it took you forever to get it took you uh it, what should have taken you 20 seconds took you two minutes to saturate your fourth base so just know that that's important as well it's because you keep like only squeezing out a few drones here and there and then you're like roaches because you're paranoid about what the, your opponent can do but the faster you hit these op like optimal saturation counts 
the more roaches you can make from then on, and you can even attack him then. Because the more money you mine, the faster you mine it, you have more to work with throughout the rest of the game. Uh, and it just in increases the power of everything you do from then on, and it makes you able to attack faster while making roaches and stuff like that. And the last thing, the last thing is the spire. You really need to make a spire when you start making a hive. The second you have you have a layer turn into a hive and it just starts morphing in the big bubble, you should be starting a spire. You should always tell yourself those two things go together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. You got the fucking jelly going up in the hive, but where's the peanut butter at? You need to spread that shit. You need to fucking make that hive, make that spire the second you start a hive. And then when the hive is done, try your best to remember to start a greater spire as soon as you can. Because, uh, just throwing this out there, a hive and a spire have the exact same build time, which is 71 seconds. So if you remember it right when it's done, you can immediately start a greater spire the second the hive is done. Anyways, that's those are the big ones. The rest of it we kind of talked about already. We don't have to really harp on it anymore. Uh, too much, you know. You, I feel like you already kind of get the point for most of it. Overall... <laughs> you have great ideas. I, I want to commend you on your, your ideas, though, for a lot of things. I think you are all... I always feel like every time I talk about your gameplay, you do what I want you to do, but you just do it a little bit too late. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just shows that you're learning and you're adapting and you're getting better at it slowly over time. I really like that a lot. So don't get too... I'm trying... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something to maybe take off the super strict coach type mentality. You're doing a good job. You're on the right track. Just keep it up. Keep doing it, and you'll you'll you will get there closer. You know, you'll get closer to where you want to be over time. Um, but yeah, I can see you. You have the right idea. Sometimes you just execute it a little bit too late. But follow the rules I just kind of gave you this game, and it'll probably help you get further along that path to becoming a better player. But good shit, man. Uh, some stuff you can work on that is pretty obvious that we just talked about. But overall, good stuff. You have you have good I good understanding of some things. I think the biggest one that I will probably continue, like if we do more of these, the biggest one I will tell you about on, that I need to help you fix is definitely your lack of understanding of what your opponent is capable of. And that's not just scouting. That's just like game awareness. One question. You said earlier that I should make attack upgrades, not carapace upgrades on the Spire, but did you mean melee attack? Okay, just to clarify, melee attack is really good for the whole counterattack reason, and it's also really good because you want to transition out of roaches. So there's really no reason to have a bunch of fucking range weapon upgrades because the last thing you want to be using your investors for against his composition of ground mech is infested terrans. So you have you have like seriously like no reason to be getting range weapon upgrades. Melee is great because it upgrades brood lords, uh, broodlings out of brood lords. It upgrades your zergling counterattack damage, and those two things are insanely effective. Now for the air. I told you to get weapon upgrades because what does Carapace upgrades do for you here on against his army? Just throwing it out there. I'm in, instead of waiting for you to answer the question, I'll just tell you. The only thing that can hit you is a lock-on from a Cyclone. That's the only thing he's made all game. And a Cyclone's lock-on is not affected by armor. It takes it, the exact amount of damage every time, which is 40 per missile. It shoots enough missiles over 14 seconds to reach a total of 800 damage to an armored target. And armor doesn't change that. It does the same damage either way. It's a spell. The only thing armor does... The, the only thing armor would give you benefit for um, against the cyclone would be its auto attack damage. And the way a cyclone works is if you auto attack a cyclone... Like, like, let's just say there was, like, 10 Broodlords here, and there were 10 Cyclones. If I auto-attack towards the Broodlords, all 10 Cyclones will go lock onto every Broodlord. That's how the AI works for a Cyclone. The only time it would ever actually really auto-attack is if you right-clicked that off, and no one's ever going to do that. Like, it's a it, it, uh, high-level pro Terran would ever do that for specific reasons, which we don't have to get into right now. No one in ladder is ever going to do that. Uh, and the other one is... Um, if the lock-on is on cooldown, that is the only time, again, Cyclones would ever actually... Uh, a Carapace upgrade would ever maybe benefit against a Cyclone's auto-attack. 
because it would actually reduce the actual auto attack then because it can't lock on yet for another four seconds. But four seconds is super is a super small window of time. And just throwing this out there one last time, that's never going to happen either. Because if a Terran is stupid enough to let his Cyclones lose a lock-on and then just sit there auto-attacking shit and not kiting anything, the Terran's going to lose the game. Anyways, it doesn't matter if you have no upgrades at all. That's just bad micro. <laughs> Carapace 3 air was totally pointless. Weapons would have been way better in this game particularly. Because it would make your Broodlords kill Cyclones and Hellions faster. And it also gives you the ability to do something like, for instance, once you have mass broodlords and stuff like, or like broodlord corruptor, you could do something like, I'll make like a 10 mutalisk or 8 mutalisk. And if this guy's every time you want to attack him, let's say he goes mass vikings and turrets and cyclones and thors defensively. And now he's the kind of guy that's going to cyclone or uh, that's going to hellion harass you around the map. Well, now you can suddenly use mutas as well as part of your army, not in your army, but as a defense. And you can kill all his Hellions all day with weapon upgraded Vitas, even though he has maxed armor, or he would by that point. It gives you more options later on as well. And then you could get Carapace after your weapons are level 3 against his current army in case this guy at some point in time wants to transition into like Liberators or Battlecruisers or whatever. Getting Carapace is still uh, nice eventually in the end against certain particular situations, but just throwing it out there against Hellion Cyclone, and all this guy was doing is Hellion Cyclone. Carapace for your air was absolutely pointless. It, it honestly does zero. Zero effect. Hope that it makes sense um, and explains it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was another replay analysis. This is I, I, would, I think I sometimes make jokes and stuff in my replay analysis, but I usually try to keep it more serious and to the point. Because it is honestly for a learning purpose. So, uh, yeah, if you guys liked it, make sure you check out more of my videos. You can um, look around. I've posted a lot of these. But much love, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.